everybody, I am Tiffany, and today I am bringing you another book review. Ooh, 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 ooh. Thank you for joining me today, as always. I have been super excited to get into this series that I'm going to be talking about with you today. As of recording this video, I have already read the first and second book, actually. I'm already on the third, but this video specifically is going to only talk about the first book, and I'll have a separate video for the second book in this series. This is by one of my favorite authors ever. He wrote Mistborn. It's a Brandon Sanderson series. Let's go! Let's go! Mm, mm, mm. Mistborn is one of my all-time favorite series. Oh, look! They're right here! This is my little Brandon Sanderson section on my shelf. See? This is the original Mistborn, and then the other three, and then this is part of the series I'm talking about today. The book, of course, that I'm talking about is Steel Heart by Brandon Sanderson. Look how pretty this cover is. Look, it's even glistening. Oh, like Steel Heart. Oh. These covers are so cool. All of them look this awesome. And granted, this is what actually drew me, besides the fact that it is Brandon Sanderson, to read this series. One, this is a trilogy that, as far as I know, is completely finished. There aren't any more books coming out. Brandon Sanderson has a lot of different series going at once, so sometimes it takes a while for a book in a certain series to come out because it looks like on Goodreads he has a ton of other series that he is working on all at the same time, which I don't know how you do it, but good for you because they're all amazing. So that was one of the reasons was the fact that this was a completed series and I wanted to be able to complete a series. That is such a good feeling by the way when you complete a series. It's the best feeling in the world. You just feel so accomplished. And then a lot of the times you get crushed because then they decide to come out with a new book five years later. The second reason like I said Brandon Sanderson is one of my favorite fantasy authors. If you have not read Mistborn go read Mistborn. He has a bunch of other books that are all supposed to take place in the same universe in a way. I haven't read them but oh my gosh I want to so badly. All of his books are rated so highly on Goodreads and there is a reason for that. I was super excited. I didn't know how this one was going to be. It was YA and while the other series I read was kind of YA, it didn't feel like it really. So I was curious to see how this was going to go. And let me tell you, this book and so far this series has not disappointed. This was so much fun. It is so good. For those of you who want statistics, this book has a 4.15 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, which again, like I've said before, is incredible. If a book hits 4 stars, that's really awesome on Goodreads. It usually means you're probably going to like it or enjoy it. It has the vibe of The Boys. If you have seen that show on Amazon, it's based off a comic book, I believe, beforehand, but it has that exact same vibe, and it's so much fun. The main character is so great. All of the characters are great. It's great storytelling. Once again, the character development is awesome. I just love it. I was so happy that I got into this. I was in a little bit of a reading slump and this book just completely took my breath away and made me want to read so much again and I'm so excited to continue this series. For those of you who have no idea what it's about, it follows this main character named David who lives in a kind of post-apocalyptic society. Basically what happens is one day this thing appears in the sky, they call it Calamity. Shortly after that people start gaining powers. However, they're not superheroes. They're super villains. They end up being called epics. So the world gets taken over by epics. Something very traumatic happens to David in his childhood and because of that he is set on going after epics. It is really really good. Again, a lot like the boys in the sense of you are fighting the superheroes in a way. So if you love the boys, I think you'll really like this book. It's a quick read too. There's only three books in the series. That is really all I have to say about it for the non-spoilery section. So if you haven't read this, please 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 go read it. It is super 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 good. Keep at it, Brandon Sanderson. You're amazing. Thank you for joining me, non spoilery people. Come back here when you've read the books and tell me what you think yourself, and then we can discuss the feels and everything together once you get back. Thank you so much for joining me, non spoilery people. Goodbye! Spoilery time! This book definitely caught me off guard in a very good way. I had just come off of one series, The Maze Runner, that didn't captivate me really as much as I wanted it to. I have reviews for those as well, so make sure you go check them out too. And I was starting to get into that reading slump and didn't really feel like reading, but this book changed all of that. 
As soon as I read the prologue, I fell in love and I knew I was really, really going to like the story. I could automatically really feel for the character. It had a great, powerful opening scene. That scene was really impactful and such a great basis to start off the story. You see David's dad, who is this guy who truly believes that good people are going to come and save them from all of these bad epics that are out there. And you see him die trying to defend an epic who clearly is evil and ends up taking over all of Chicago, which is called New Chicago now. But that was just so powerful. You have this man who's just honest and hardworking, loves his son, and it really touched me right off the bat. And as soon as I read that, I knew I was going to fall in love with this story. David is just such a fun and kooky character. You don't really see as many oddballs as him. There's a lot of very cookie cutter examples of characters, and David was just unique and I loved it. He was a big nerd, and all of his metaphors just had me cracking up because of the fact that they made absolutely no sense and that was a running thing in the book but it was just really cool to see that and see someone who was just different and an oddball and didn't fit in quite right but was trying to find his footing in the world in this crazy superhero super villain world. The Reckoners themselves were super super cool all amazing characters. Megan? Who? Oh, Megan. Megan was such great character development. Prof is such a great character, such a great leader. All of them. Cody, Abraham, Tia, all of them are unique and interesting and have their own thing about them. And that is one thing about Brandon Sanderson's books that I love. He does like to write like that where you have this good group of about six people or so, five or six people that you really grow to care about. In Mistborn, you have Kelsier's whole crew. If you've read Mistborn, I'm not going to spoil anything, I promise. But you have a crew, a lot like you do here in Steelheart. And I love that because of the fact that he is so good at making each character their own. And they're very unique and you remember them because of that. Now of course why David hates Epic so much is because of the fact that Steelheart killed his dad. I think the opening fight scene where you are introduced to Megan, I thought that was a really cool scene. I liked that David had to drive even though he sucked at driving so much and then the whole rest of the book people keep saying he can't drive and he's just like what? I only like crashed it like once. <laughs> he was so just funny throughout it. I loved him and Megan's relationship and I gotta say it was a little jarring at first when her emotions would flicker so constantly she'd be happy but then all of a sudden she'd be really angry and you wouldn't really get why and I had just come off a of Maze Runner and basically dealt with the main character who did that so I was about to get really annoyed because I didn't want to deal with another character like that but luckily Brandon Sanderson of course explained exactly why she was like that and it was so mind-blowing and another thing about his books I know I keep raving about him but he is so good at just catching you off guard he makes you feel like that you're actually figuring it out but right when you think you have it you don't and then guess what it's something else crazy and then all of a sudden you're like oh my god you're just falling to the floor in shock because it's that good it's that good of a twist I kept trying to guess what was happening but I couldn't figure it out the biggest mystery in this book is how in the world they're going to kill Steelheart. David's dad is the only one who was able to hurt Steelheart in any capacity. David's dad was trying to shoot another epic that was about to attack Steelheart and all of a sudden Steelheart gets grazed and he's hurt. Of course he destroys the entire bank and makes sure there's no witnesses except he forgets about David. David is the only one that's seen Steelheart hurt and they're trying to figure out how in the world they can destroy him and it caught me completely off guard when I figured out what it was. I thought really that it had to be Ricochet. When they were trying to figure out that maybe it was the gun or maybe it was something in the vault, an item that caused a weakness, I kept thinking that it was because of the fact that his father wasn't trying to aim at Steelheart. He was trying to truly aim at the other epic. And because of that, Steelheart got hurt. Of course, it caught me off guard again. And I knew I was wrong as soon as they started formulating and David said pretty much that maybe it's something where he isn't supposed to be the one they're aiming for. I thought, man, there goes my whole theory I had throughout this whole book. And I was sitting there this whole time I'm thinking, <laughs> I figured it out. I figured it out. But no, I didn't. I didn't figure it out at all. But what it was, was so satisfying. And that was what made me so happy. That final battle, everything went crazy. You just figured out all of it all happening at once. It was insane. The way that Steelheart dies is so epic. And it makes so much sense. And it rounds everything together. David's dad was not afraid of Steelheart. And that was the reason that Steelheart was able to get hurt. David's dad was the only person who wasn't afraid of him. And as soon as that happened, I was like, oh my gosh, 
gosh, that makes so much more sense. And it made so much more sense of why Steelheart was trying to make sure that everybody feared him in some capacity. Because if someone tried to attack him and they didn't fear him, he was dead. He wasn't invincible anymore. And the way David killed him, oh, that was so great. I loved it. He tricked Steelheart into basically killing himself. Oh, it was awesome. Oh, it was great. I just, mm, mm. I loved it. Also, another big twist comes with Firefight. Firefight is an epic that, of course, helps Steelheart as part of his little group of people. None of the epics really support each other, but when someone is so strong as Steelheart, you just end up falling in line. No one knew really who Firefight was. David finds out pretty early on that it's an illusion, and that was really, really interesting, especially how they set that up, because you have one of David's first missions dealing with an illusionist. So you have an idea, sort of, of how these powers can work. And I also liked the factor that, with any epic in general, there were no set specific rules. You had classifications that they made for them, which was really great by the way. I really appreciated that. But each epic again is to their own. Everyone has a different weakness. Everyone has their own little tweaks to their power. And that's a reason why it makes an epic so dangerous. You can have an illusionist epic like we see at the beginning of the book, but that doesn't mean that that's going to help you catch Firefight, for example. That is one specific illusionist epic. The twist with Megan being Firefight, that was such a great idea and I loved it. Especially because you see her die. Now granted, I sat there thinking there's no way she's dead. No. There's no way they're gonna kill her. No way. They bring her back and I think they're gonna revive her. I truly think that they're going to revive her. And they don't. She ends up dying. And so it really kind of throws you off the trail. It still left me feeling a little bit like I think she's going to maybe be alive. I don't know. I could not for the life of me put together that she would be firefight. I had no idea. And looking back, I'm like, I really should have guessed by that point. But I didn't. And I think that was because of the reason they kept saying it was a he so that threw me off but everything else it lined up and I was just like wow but that's something that Brandon Sanderson is really good at is he leaves clues for you so when you look back you're like wow how did I not see that like for example you have with the tensors that David ends up getting really good at Megan they don't work on her and the reason that it doesn't work on her is because of the fact that she is an epic powers were being transferred as we find out with prof we will get to that but powers cannot be transferred between epics and that is the reason why they were weren't working. And Megan's just such a cool character, in all honesty. Even though she's a villain and I'm curious to see what continues to happen with her, she's mysterious. And like I said, it helped explain everything about why she was very erratic sometimes with her behavior and that helped tremendously because if that was just her nature, she probably would have been ten times more annoying to me. Her nicknaming David Knees was super cute and the way they flirted was super cute too. It was really fun seeing their interactions between each other. The other big bombshell comes with Prof. Now Prof is the leader of the Reckoners and for some reason I still didn't guess that Prof was indeed an epic himself. My brain didn't think about the technology from the epics being something that Prof transferred over to them. The tensors aren't actually gloves that can do that that they invented. Prof gives them this power and his power is the ability to cut through steel and manipulate it basically. Prof is the most powerful epic. He's very scary but he's also very good natured and it was so interesting learning through him the struggle because throughout the book you are believing that all epics are bad all epics truly have a bad nature until you get to Edmund who is Conflux but he's actually not a bad epic Conflux is the one that keeps the city of Nukago basically having electricity he actually is pretty complacent and doesn't really complain and isn't trying anything bad but because of the fact that he has the ability to give his powers away he's a gifter it makes him less evil because he's giving his power away he's not not as easily corrupted. And that's what happens with Prof too. Even though he's super powerful, he has the ability to get these powers, which stops him really from being evil. But he's still dangerous because of the fact that if he does use his powers, he can succumb to that. And that puts such a whole perspective on epics themselves. You see epics like Megan, you see epics like Prof that when they don't use their powers, they actually are good people. It truly is the power that's making them corrupt. If they use it, they succumb to it, and all of a sudden they're evil and they can't control their nature. But it definitely changes your perspective on everything, and I think definitely gives great growth to David himself. This is a dude who wanted to hunt down epics for the longest time, but now he's learning that a big hero of his is an epic himself. I think we'll definitely have an impact on him in further books along the way, especially with Megan. He fell in love with Megan. They didn't really start up a romance like that, but he loved her. Finding out that she was an epic and her trying to attack him really hurt him, 
but he also saw the good nature in her if she didn't use her powers. I am very curious to see what happens in the next coming books. There's a lot happening. I'm more curious about the epic's weaknesses and what makes them what they are. I have read this little short story, Mitosis. You should read it. It's the next part of it. Little spoilers, so if you don't want to be spoiled for Mitosis, which is just a novella in between, then you may want to mute for a bit, sorry. But I do find out that in Mitosis that the weaknesses are connected to something that happened to the epics in their past. In Mitosis, Mitosis is able to be killed by listening to his own rock music. I think it's so cool how each weakness is really, really different and unique and very specific and weird. It makes it difficult to figure out what it is and to kill epics themselves. That is really all I have to say about this book. It's super incredible. I think it's really, really great. You definitely should go and try and read it. Even if you stayed all the way through the spoilery section, go and check it out yourself. I will have a review up of Firefight soon because of the fact that I've actually pretty much read it all. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any other book or movie recommendations or TV recommendations, please leave them in the comments below. And also, if you want any updates on everything, make sure to go to my blog. It's tiffanybooksandmovies.blogspot.com. Here's a link right here, right here. It just gives you updates on when I have new videos and just tells you about what's going on in my acting life as well, since I'm an actress as well. Thank you so much again for your support. It means the world to me. Have an awesome day, evening, afternoon, whatever time of the day you're watching this in. Don't forget to be awesome. All right. Goodbye! Whoa!